Greetings, this is Commander Gangreen TVP, and what am I talking to you about to you today? Um, of course, the X52 Pro flight control system again. Now, um, I had a little bit of problems with it. I've had this uh, joystick set for years. I have a lot of friends who use this, so I've never, and they've never had a problem. I've never had a problem. But uh, just to be fair, uh, this has been several years since I've had this, and I do have kids around, and their friends have played with these. And I know that one time I came home and I found uh, my daughter's friends running around the basement, you know, just running all around the house and, and, and playing with the joysticks. And, you know, um, so they have had some wear and tear associated with them. So um, I didn't when uh, recently the trigger stopped working. I've got the trigger fixed now. It's perfect. Everything's great. It just you wouldn't hear that snap noise. And I wouldn't, the primary trigger button wouldn't work. And essentially the secondary uh, trigger function wouldn't work either since the primary um, didn't work. I actually discovered secondary doesn't work unless the primary is triggered. So um, as opposed to trying to send this into warranty, I've had it for years, so um, I didn't think it would probably be covered. So I decided to go ahead and try to fix it myself as opposed to buying a new one. Um, so we go to this web page here. I did find this web page right here that um, basically it goes into detail uh, for fixing your trigger. Now, basically what I found is that it was missing some of the crucial steps and missing some information. You'll see all that in the upcoming video. Um, but uh, a couple things I'll just mention here. Uh, looking at this page, uh, let me uh, click down here. There we go. There we control. There we go. There. So I got control of the screen now. So you got your X52. Um, it says you need a Phillips uh, one screwdriver. You're gonna need a Phillips two, zero as well. Phillips one, Phillips zero, TX Tor uh, T10 Torx screwdriver. You need that. And I'd also recommend a pair of needle nose um, pliers. Uh, down here, you know, I talk about your tools. Um, we talk about the steps. Here's your screws, one through five. Here's your screws um, six, seven, and eight, and uh, there are screws of different threads. I mentioned that in the video, but uh, you want to keep the screws definitely. You want to keep them straight. You want to keep them all lined up so you know what screws came from where. Then it goes down to these steps here, and this is where I think it's problematic. I think what you want to do is do an additional step before you do this of disassembling uh, your pinky trigger. Excuse me pinky trigger assembly. So you want to take that apart uh, before you do these steps. And basically what I did is I took it all apart, fixed the problem. When I realized that it was going to be as easy to fix as it was, I filmed the entire reassembly process. So if you watch that in reverse, you'll be able to essentially see how to take apart or fix your joystick. So I bent that piece of metal just like it, um, it suggests here and voila everything works. So if you like the video, if it helped you out, if you're able to fix your joystick or fix a problem with it, uh, go ahead and thumbs up the video and uh, appreciate your support. You can subscribe to my channel if you like. Uh, thank you very much. First thing is I want to apologize, but I'm using my daughter's play table because it's got the best lighting source right here for me to uh, disassemble this thing. So this is my disassembled X52 Pro joystick. See all the wires inside. If I turn it, you can see a little bit of what's going on here. So you're asking, uh, why did I disassemble this thing? Very good question. Well, the issue I had. Let me see if I can get some good lighting on this. The issue I had was with the tr with the trigger working. So if you'll notice, let's see if I can get this to focus well. I'm going to turn it a little bit away from the light and focus on it. It's going to be kind of hard to see. Let's see, maybe I can... Well, anyway, there's two switches in here for that trigger. Here's a click. So what actually happened is that metal piece right there, the little curved metal piece, the black... Um, you can see there's like a black piece here. Let's see if I can get my finger in here. There we go. It's a black piece here, and it connects this curved metal piece right there. It's actually two curved metal pieces. The first one is the primary fire trigger, and if it goes farther, there's another piece back there, which you can't really see on camera. But you can see in person real well, it connects to that second trigger. So the first trigger there, that metal piece, even when this was depressed all the way, now it 
clicks real easy. Bam, I made it real sensitive. What I did is I bent, I just took a pair of pliers. I got some paint on them from a previous project, but they still work. And I went in there and I grabbed that piece and I bent it a little far forward. So I took it, twisted it a little forward, and now that contact works really well. And I, like I said, I made it real sensitive because I bent that thing a little bit farther forward. So what I want to do is, since I wasn't able to find a fully formed instruction video as to how to get this thing apart and fix the problem, I'm going to reverse taking this thing apart in the put together video. And when we're putting this thing back together, we'll see um, if you reverse the video steps how to go ahead and take it apart. So look, what do we got right here going on right now? So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to take this right side of the joystick and we're going to reattach it. There's that. Then we have this whole front assembly here. So the front assembly, let's zoom out here a little further. So this front assembly, you got the front part of the joystick. You have this part which is your up and down um, adjustment height for the uh, pinky trigger. And the pinky trigger is actually in there, as you can see. It's the metal pinky trigger right in there. And that metal pinky trigger actually connects this little assembly hanging off the front, which is connected with three very small screws. Which I'm only seeing two, looks like one rolled. I'll have to find that here in a second. They're very, very, very small screws. Um, and I'll talk about all the different tools you need, and we'll go through, like I said, in reverse, putting this thing back together. It actually wasn't that hard. I was a little worried about it, but it wasn't that hard to take this thing back apart and uh, fix it. So let me find that screw. I'm going to stop the video, and we'll get back to putting this thing together. So all three screws have been found. First off, uh, the first tool I'm going to use in reverse assembly, well, first what we're going to do, which was the last thing I did on this other one, of course I bent that little thing, a little, see if we can get those metal pieces showing up here a little bit better. There we go, that's showing pretty good. Let's show that trigger assembly. Yep. So what I did is I actually wiggled this, um, this trigger back and forth, pulling it a little bit for me, don't towards me, towards, you know, towards the camera. Um, this way, and I, I just kind of move that black piece out of the way. Don't pull it too far because there's a spring assembly up in there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. There's a spring assembly. Yep, there you go. See a spring assembly. So you want to pull that thing off where you, you screw that spring because then it's probably going to be a real pain in the butt to get our nice spring action of our trigger to return it forward. We don't want to mess up that spring assembly. So all I did is I just wiggled it back and forth. You know, just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle this way, pulling it towards the camera until I moved that black piece out of the way, was able to get my my uh, pliers in there and, and adjust that thing. You can see the, how the whole assembly works now, and how that whole thing clicks. And you can see that second piece coming in there and activating your second trigger function. It's actually very snappy and peppy now. I like... Uh, modification added into it. But basically what happened is even when this metal piece was pushed all the way back, that little blue connector down there was not getting snapped. So I had to bend the, the little metal piece forward a little bit. And now um, it's working much better. And I wasn't hearing that click. I would actually pull the trigger. The only click I would hear is the second one. And FYI, um, it will not even activate the second trigger unless the first trigger is switched. I don't know if that's part of the programming. That's definitely it seemed if this piece didn't trigger that. The second piece actually never triggered either. So even though the second uh, switch was activating, um, the first switch had to be actually triggered. I don't know if there's part of the circuit in there. Is the first switch makes to connect the second for uh, connects the circuit for the second switch? I don't know. Um, and I am not an electrician, guys. I'm just uh, a pretty informed layperson. So you know, this is not my field of expertise. So let's go ahead and do that first step which is the reverse step of putting, and you can kind of see, just a little FYI, I can look at some of the stuff that we got apart here. This is the pinky assembly. There's a little, uh, you can see a little spring system in there. And basically this little black bar right there. 
that moves forward and backwards from the pinky trigger and creates the connection which sends the signal through those white and orange cables right there back into a black cable back here which connects to the joystick. Um, you can see this is kind of loosely um, in this whole thing. So this thing can go up and down. And you can actually see there's a little slot up in here that allows that wire to go up and down. So you can adjust that uh, height for the pinky trigger for a different size hand. So that's that. Let's go ahead and do the first step. I'm going to re, there we go, refocus the camera. We're going to take our um, right side of the yoke here. I'm going to go ahead and dust it off just so I can make sure there's a little dust possible. It was a little dusty just because, you know, dust gets in places if you're on the ring there, the edge, a little bit of, I'm sure, skin cells and dust and things are in there. And there's a little bit of dust and hair in this thing. Just kind of blow it off. Let's go ahead and put this guy back on. I just got to make sure life them. There was a piece of white tape up here with this uh, associated with the screw. Don't know why that is, but I'm leaving it. Just another little FYI. I'm gonna put the camera down. I'm just gonna go ahead and basically what I'm doing is I'm sliding this thing right back on. Just make sure everything's aligned. I'm just gonna slide it in. All right, so a couple tricks that I noted. Um, these little bars here. Utilize them to help line it up. In this spring, you're gonna have to kind of angle it and push it down so it so it, that pushes the spring down. The spring will elevate a little bit when this piece is removed. You just got kind of, when you're pushing it in, you know, kind of angle it and then like this, and push it in. You can angle it like this and you're sliding it in. So push that little spring down and then push things together. I'm just going to go ahead and try to slide this now that the, the alignment appears to be okay. There's no wires or anything in there. Um, another thing I'm going to check on the front here is that since I move that trigger around, I want to make sure there's no gaps and that it's, you know, it's right in the middle where it should be right there. Okay, um, another thing I noticed, let me see if I can focus it, trying to focus it. There we go. So this little piece right here, this lines up with this when you're sliding it in. I took it back out so you could see it, but that really helped to slide things back into place. Bingo, bingo, boingo, I slid that piece back on, I pushed it together as well as I could, and there are screws that we're going to have to, you know, put back in. There's actually eight screws that I had to take out of the joystick that disassembled. Um, so this is what it looks like right at the moment on this step, which would be, if you were reversing, I guess the second to last step to be complete, to completing to disassembling it to work on that trigger. What's next? Um, there are some uh, instructions I found online, but I think was missing a crucial step to keep you from breaking your joystick. So what I actually s discovered was we really needed to get this whole thing apart easily um, was to take this pinky assembly right here for the pinky trigger and remove it from the guard. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to slide the guard back onto place and we're going to then re-screw the pinky trigger assembly back onto this platform. And if I can show you here, it's going to be hard to get the lighting, but let's see if we can do it. I need to look at essentially this little sliding platform. Oh, there's pinky trigger right out of there. That's not important. Let's make sure we slide it back in place. Let's see. There's three screw holes. I'm going to try to get it in focus. I think this is hard because it's guard in some way. Okay, let's do it out of focus. You can still see. There's one right here. There's one in the front. And there's one that mirrors that one right there. And it's really hard to focus it because this part of the guard here is causing the camera not to want to focus on the plate back there. And the plate cannot be disassembled fully because this screw in front cannot be fully removed. And since that screw cannot be fully removed, the plate and the guard all have to come off together. And there is now the removed uh, pinky trigger. Let's see if I get there. We go. We got a little bit of focus there. Sorry about this. This is just um, I have camcorder. This is the basic uh, phone camera. Um, and so let's see if we can get that. There you can see those two screw holes right there. One being down there, the other being up here. 
Let's get my other finger out of the way. One down here, one up here, and one up toward the front. You can't see, but trust me, it's there. And I'll show you when we're screwing them in. So basically, it looks like there's also like some kind of guide here for this pinky trigger. Whoop, this dropped out of our place. And an uh, interesting note is the pinky trigger is definitely metal. This is definitely metal pinky trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that in. But most importantly, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this uh, you know pinky trigger back in place. But most importantly, is I'm gonna to slide this thing back on to there. And this could be kind of the hard part. Once you get that pinky taken apart, it wasn't that bad to pull it off. But um, you know you gotta slide this little round piece around the joystick into those notches. And I actually found when I took it apart, no matter what your setting was early on, I pushed it up to the top because actually the slope of the joystick here pushing it as far up as possible made it really easy to assemble so I'm actually gonna reassemble it in a top slot even though I go I put mine on four this is one two three four five I put mine on four but I'm gonna start it in one during the reassembly then you know very last thing is I'll set my pinky trigger to the proper height again well, FYI I'm just gonna orient this thing and I'm gonna slide it on and it isn't the easiest thing, but it will go on. I'll make any notes if I can as I'm doing it. What is make sure that um, that silver screw in the front of the um, handguard and the guard is as screwed as unscrewed as most as possible. These two little pieces are going to have these two little prongs here. This fork down here in the bottom of the guard is going to have to slide down in there, and this back part is going to have to also reach around and slide into there. So um, remember, keep it up as high as possible when doing it. So where I'm at right now is I'm holding the pinky trigger so it doesn't fall or fall out of place. I've gotten those two things. You can kind of see how they're kind of aligned there. This thing is going to stay, the bottom of that fork there is going to stay off of that placement. We're not going to have that actually connected at this point until after we re-screw the pinky trigger back together. But you can also see that this thing is now starting to slide into the top slot there. I actually let go of the pinky trigger now because it's not going to fall out and you can see I'm sliding that further in. You can kind of see where those two guard things are. They're in general, you know, in kind of the right spot, but let's see if I can move the slide down. There we go. So you can kind of see where that's at. Let's go ahead and turn it. You can kind of see where that's sliding into. And I'm actually probably just going to bump it up so it kind of pops into there. But not all the way in. I'm just going to kind of, you know, push it up and right about it, in front of it. I don't want it on it. I want it in front of it. Because later we're going to slap those things on there. We're going to pull them a little bit towards us and just pop them in. Okay, now this is a real important thing I encountered here. If you notice right in the center here, got my hand kind of busy. Right, try to, there's little notches right there. You'll see them. You can see the bottom notch and the second notch up. There's notches all the way up. I had to pull this thing towards me a little bit to get it over that notch when I was putting it back on. It's now completely in the right spot, but I had to pull it over the notch to pull it in. So you might have to pull it over the notch to get it off. I'm still, I found, needing to hold that trigger up, which I'm doing with my finger underneath. I'm holding that pinky trigger in place. So I need to kind of see what's going on around here. Let's move this light. Oops, move my finger there. You can see the pinky trigger is ready to be reconnected to the assembly and, and work and fire. Um, you can kind of see where that's at at the moment. And you can kind of see where the top assembly is pretty much almost in place as well. There was another little ridge, this little guy right here. And there's a little opening on this piece and I actually got caught in that ridge. So I had to back it off and pull it up so it went up into there. But you'll notice if I get the light here again the right way. that it's still not over that piece and we don't want it to be. We don't want those pieces overlapping yet. You'll see the pinky trigger is in there. The assembly is ready to be um, screwed back together at this point. And the 
the collars, or whatever you want to call that, the collar that goes around the joystick for the base for the pinky trigger is all right where it needs to be. That thing is loosened, and like I said, it's way easier, and maybe even only possible if it's in the top position on the platform, on, of the multiple positions that are optional for that pinky base. It's hard to actually film this without blocking the light, which is very needed. You need a good light source and a flashlight or light. I have this nice little snake light um, lamp that I can kind of bend and put in any position I want to help me see what's going on. Um, this is very helpful. don't need that though. You could have a flashlight or whatever, but you need something to be able to hold it. But you can see that right above where the plate is, there's that screw, and there's, I'm actually, my thumb is over one of the screw holes, and then I'm there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that little platform, which is really hard to see because it's my thumb, that little trigger piece and I'm going to re-screw the bottom trinky pinky assembly back up to the bottom of the platform with the trigger in place where it needs to be. The thing is it's critical might be really hard to see on a camera but there's a little metal silver spur that comes off the bottom of the pinky trigger. You can see it right there and that needs to be in front and you can't really see it but there's a little black box, a little, there you, you can't see a hump right there coming off the black box, right where that kind of, that metal piece is right there, I think you need to get that metal piece in front of that black box, so that's the assembly that pushes back to actually trigger the connector or the, um, whatever you want to call it, the switch within that pinky trigger, so you gotta make sure that piece is in front of that piece when you're assembling it. Now that I made sure, really hard to see with this light here. I got a get light, but I'm blocking the light. You can see it's actually in the right position. Should I get it focused and get the light and everything working here? There we go. It's actually in position. You can see where the first screw is going to go in there on the left. Then I put the second screw on the top, and then I put the third screw on the right. Um, okay, so. Here's the screw. I'm going to be using um, the screwdriver, or the screw, and I guess the screwdriver for it. Um, I have a really nice screwdriver set um, that I got at Walmart. I think it was probably like 10 bucks or something like that. But it has a, it had a big screwdriver, and it had a little screwdriver. I ended up just using the little screwdriver for this whole thing, but on certain parts of the assembly, I just took this extender off and just used the extender and put the right head on there because it made it a little easier to maneuver where I needed to get this thing to go to screw the pieces I need. Most of the screwing was done with this, but certain situations I'm with this. Now what screw are we using for this step here? Which driver? It's going to be really hard for you to see, so I'm not going to bother telling you, but it's a Phillips head zero. And so you're going to want to use a Phillips head zero for this step. And I'm going to take the Phillips up zero. Let me set this up. I do have a stand that's going to be a little awkward. There we go. Let's see if we can get focused. Of course not. We got our Phillips head zero. And I've got my little screw. Bingo, bongo, bango. And I'm going to get that, the screw on the, on the Phillips head there, on Phillips head zero. And the Phillips head zero. There are three Phillips head zero screws that are going to screw that pinky trigger assembly back together. And that first one, so that's going to be really going to go right in here. See this little shaft line right there? I know it's blurry, but right there, bang, and it's going to screw right into the assembly. What I ended up doing here is I'm holding the joystick upside down to make it way easier to get that screw in place. Now, um, so you can see the screw is in there. I found it way easier to get that screw and just holding the whole joystick completely upside down like this on the table. Holding, using my fingers to hold that in place. Use my other hand or you can use pliers if you can get the screw in there. I'm going to try to drop that in there. I was able to do it with my hands a little bit easier. Now that it's in place, I'm going to screw it. Now what you'll know, what I'm going to tell you right now is you're going to really have to tilt the base up. To, well, at least in, with my particular um, screw situation, my screwdriver situation, to make it so I can get it in place to screw that in. And I'm not going to be able to show that because I'm going to need both hands, but I'm going to go ahead and screw that one down. Then I'm going to be able to, hopefully easier, get the other two screws in. Well, screw one is now in. 
Let me go focus. You can see it in there actually. That one's still not in up top. Up there. And we have the other one on the other side. That's going to need to go in as well. It's hard to do it with watch the camera right in there. So the third one's going to go. Um, I guess I could try to even practice see if the trigger's going to go. I can hear the click. Everything's in place and everything's working. So that means I'm going to drop the other two screws in and screw them in. So now all three screws are in place. It was way easier also with that platform being in the top position to get a little bit more hand room to get those screws into place. Um, but all three screws are now in there. Once again, test the pinky trigger. Working perfectly as designed. Perfect. There you can see that's assembled there. I've got it right side up. That piece needs to be slid into position. So does that piece on the other side. We're going to bring them towards us and snap them on. I'm just gonna real carefully. I don't want to break these pieces here. Just real carefully. I'm inch that one over, just boop, pop it in there, and on the same side, on the opposite side I mean, I'm going to do the same exact thing here, pop that up into there. Now that's in the correct position, this one on the other side is in the correct position, and FYI, when I did that, I actually found it easier just to grab both sides and slide them in simultaneously as opposed to do one and the other, like I said, I ended up just grabbing one side of each hand and sliding them in together. Worked way better than trying to do one by one. As I'm really always watching the tension I'm putting on this plastic to it, and they're not want to crack or break these pieces here. Now you can see the whole thing's kind of um, in the original position. Where What do we got here screw-wise? There's eight screws that need to be put back together. Um, and there are some notes, some serious notes you need to um, take with these screws so you don't screw anything up. So you can see I have the eight screws lined up that take the trigger guard assembly and allow you to remove the right side of the joystick um, in there. You're going to want to keep these in an exact order. For example, the screw number seven and screw number six look identical. And it's gonna be hard to do a side by side up close. But basically, take my word for it, even though those two screws look pretty much identical, the threading is different, so we need to make sure the screws go into the holes that they came out of on the joystick. So when you're doing this reverse direction, you're taking this apart, make sure as you're taking them out that you put them in a line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so you can put them back in exactly where you found them, or where you took them out from. You don't want to get these mixed up. Okay, so on the top of the guard here, this is where 7 and 8 are going to go in. Since I'm doing this reverse order, this one over here is going to be 8, this one over here is going to be 7, and that's the screw. Now these screws here are going to be a weird type of screw. Let me uh, pull it out, it's going to be hard for you to see. This is a T10 hexagonal type screw. I don't, know, I don't usually use these types of screws, but that's how I can describe it. It's got like six points in there, like a star. And it's a T10. And that's going to be utilized for screws number 8, 7, 6, and 5. And remember, 6 and 5 have different threadings than 7 and 8, so don't mix those two up. So we're going to use that T10 screw. We're going to screw it in. We're going to screw this screw that's in my hand right into that right guard. And I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to show you the aftermath. Trying to show this is not doing a very good job, but it doesn't go straight in. It goes mostly an angle coming down. When you're screwing these out, taking it apart, just note that it's coming out like an angle like this from the joystick. Not like this straight in. But notice the angle of this plastic here, like 90 degrees to that. Like that. One on the right is screwed in, and I just screw them in until they're snug tight. None of these screws were really difficult to unscrew, but they were, real, they were just snug tight. They weren't ridiculously in there. I didn't have to force any of these screws to come out, and I'm not going to force any of them in. I don't want to break any, uh, any of the threading or anything that's going on there, so I'm just putting them in snug tight until there's screw number 8. Now I'm going to get screw number 7. And I'm going to take screw number 7, just the one all the way in right there, and I'll put that right into the left side there. 
the note with those two screws, they're both in place now. I've got them both screwed in there. Um, I did make sure, you know, I jiggled this to make sure this is the guard piece is in the right place. You got the alignment up, there's nothing, you know, no wires or anything in there. I don't think there were any wires, but I just want to make sure everything was good. I put in this one, snug tight, put in this one snug tight. I retested this one. I got this one in snug tight, this one was a little loose, so I just went, did each one until I felt like they were both snug tight back and forth. And I'm comfortable with where they're at right now. Screws five and six. Five and six came out of these guys right here. And those are both, they're still using the same screw driver, that T10 hexagonal screw. But they're going to go on each side there. There. And there. Now you can see both the screws are in there. Both snug tight. So now we have screws three and four. So that third one's rolling. Put him back where he was. Put those guys in. Now screw four. Four was actually the hardest screw um, to take out because of the actual head I was using. Um, it was actually kind of recessed into the controller kind of deep so when I used, when I tried to use this head and these last four screws by the way are going to be a Phillips head one Where did I put my Phillips head one at? Right, here it is, my Phillips head one. Those are actually two Phillips head zeros. I'll show you that. When I had this much depth to go in, up to here, that was not enough to reach the screw. So I had to very loosely I'd use this guy right here and I didn't sink the screw all the way in I sank it only like partially in that way I would get a little more depth from this so what I'll do is I'll, I'll screw it in and then when I can't screw it anymore I'll pull it a little bit out like this so I'll use a stand here that's hard to do so I just put it in just a touch not that far, just a touch, like that, to give myself a little more reach in that hole there. So we'll see what happens. But yep, that first number four is going right in there, above that trigger. Possible C, but the number four screw is in there, snug tight. Where's the three screw go? The three screw goes right there in the middle of the joystick, so just lower of the trigger on the right side. So I'm going to take the number three screw, uh, Phillips head number one, and put it in there. Three screws in place, number two screw is right down in here. I'm going to put number two in there, number one is on the opposite side down here, it's going to be hard to see, let me see if I get the light down there. Oh, I'm, excuse me, it's not on that side, I'm wrong. See them both right here. So I get the light down there. There we go. So there's this is number two on the front here. Right there. Number one's right there. So two, one. You should see that screw in there, number one. So number two's in there, number one's in there, they're both screwed tight. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the pinky platform down to slot number four, so if it's my hand, it's way too small for me. Um, it's more for like a really smaller hand there, I'm gonna put it down. I've tightened up the front screw, I moved it down to the fourth position, maybe a large C. One, two, three notches above it, it's in the fourth slot. Everything's tightened up, let's go ahead and try a pinky trigger. You definitely hear snap, 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 snap. And the main trigger. Right, first one, click, 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 and second trigger. So it's definitely fixed. Good as new. 
And that is how to fix your um, trigger if you lose your primary trigger. Just a matter of bending that little metal piece a little bit. Um, so it'll activate that switch for you. And that's it. Now I've got it real snappy. I just push on the trigger a little bit. Boom. No delay whatsoever. Boom. Just real quick. Alright. Hope you guys um, appreciate that uh, tutorial on how to disassemble and uh, fix your pinky trigger. Like I said, um, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. So I didn't make the video until I actually had fixed it. And then if you reverse these instructions, you will be able to disassemble and then reassemble the joystick. Thanks. Bye. So once again, this is the screwdriver set I was using for this tutorial. It's got pretty much every kind of little screw head you could ever possibly want in here. Um, comes with two screwdrivers, extenders for both, little ratchet pieces. This is what it looks like on the front. The Hyper Tough 65 piece ratchet screwdriver set. And Pretty much been able to use this for any uh, job I've come across. So if you're, interested, if you're looking to pick up something that's got everything you could ever want, I was pretty sure it wasn't even that expensive. I think it was like ten bucks over at Walmart. So um, pretty good deal to be able to um, get any job done you need. Inside uh, this old, um, you know, you know, those pliers, uh, just to help me get in there and bend that piece of metal. So that was all those needed. You know, those pliers. Here I need a size 1 Phillips head, size 0 Phillips head, and a T10, um, looks kind of like that, the hexagonal screws. Um, and then you'll be able to disassemble and repair your trigger, should your trigger not make that clicky noise anymore and not work. Thanks, Spike.